Hi guys, this tutorial should give you everything you need to know on how to set up the controls for your Tiger FIV in DCS. In my previous tutorial I explained all the systems of the Tiger, check it out here so you understand all the buttons and switches that I'll show in this video. My hardware setup includes the Thrustmaster Warthog joystick and throttle and the CH Flight Rudder Pedals Pro. I'm gonna explain everything according to what I've set up on my joystick, but I will give hints on what to set up in case you have a different joystick. So on screen here you can see two overviews of my joystick and throttle setup and also a small keyboard to show you what I press in game. It's a Swiss keyboard layout, but for DCS that doesn't matter since it will use the same key location as for example a US layout in game. You can download these pictures as well as my input profiles, link is in the description. Now let me quickly show you how to import those input profiles into DCS. First you have to open the controls page. Then you have to go to either of these columns. Press anywhere in between the column you want to choose. Go to load profile. You're going to have to navigate to where your inputs are saved. Then you're going to have to choose the keyboard profile and press OK. Same goes for the routers of course. Choose the column, just press anywhere in between. Then choose the rudders, press OK. Same for the throttle, choose the throttle, press OK. And then same for the joystick as well, press joystick and press OK. Now of course this only works if you have the same joystick, throttle and pedals as me, but for keyboard it should work anyways. Now I'm going to go through both pictures here to show you what exactly I put where on my HOTA system and also explaining why. It might be too small to read, so you might want to open the two pictures you can download from the description. And then I'm going to show you the keyboard adjustments that I made and also show you how to properly set up your access. Alright, so HOTAS means hand on throttle and stick. And the philosophy behind it is that you can leave your hands on the throttle and on the stick during the critical flight phases and also during air combat. This means that you need all the buttons used during those flight phases at your fingertips, which is especially trim control, speed brake and flap control, and during combat all the radar modes, uh, gun and missile modes, and also weapon release. Alright, let's go through the throttle first. Now up on top here we have the left engine and right engine start button. In the cockpit it's these two. Then coming down here we have the cockpit zoom which I put on this throttle friction lever. And then I found that the emergency jettison panel looks quite similar to these three buttons. So I've decided to put them all on here. So we have the emergency all jettison up here. This will not work if the yellow cap is still on so you need to take it off first. Then we have the select jettison select position on this switch and also the select jettison off position. And then we have the select jettison push button on this one. Coming to the left here, we have the sidewinder left and right wingtip. I've put them on these two switches to the side here, right wingtip on off and the left wingtip on off. Coming up here, we have the flap lever. Right now it's not a three-way switch yet, so you can only go either one step up or one step down with it. Later they will hopefully fix it into a three-way switch, so we can actually uh, use the three-way switch on the throttle accordingly. Same goes for the thumb switch, which we have here on the throttle. It's the boat switch. Uh, it's not a three-way switch yet, so you have to select forward and backward by cycling through it. For the speed brake, exactly the same. It should be a three-way switch, but it is not right now. So we only have full forward or full backward. I put it here on this switch on my throttle. Now we can actually take the throttle out of idle into the cutoff position. With the Thrustmaster Warthog, this is actually a button where we can do it physically. You need to choose left engine idle off and right engine idle off for this function. Now coming down here, Onto the throttle we have the TDC up, down, left and right, which I put on this four-way hat. This is what actually controls the cursor on your radar screen. I've also put the radar mode standby and operational on this four-way hat here. 
radar operational is forward, radar standby backward, and upwards and downwards position are range increase and range decrease here. Like that we can control all the radar controls only with our thumb. Coming back here we have gun missile cam on and master arm off, which is this red button here. The cover needs to be up and then we can control with our pinky if master arm is on or off. Now the last thing on our throttle is the China hut down here. We have missile on cage and side cage button on this. Missile on cage forward and side cage button backwards. Alright, let's quickly go through our joystick setups. Up here we have trim, up, down, left, right. We also have our weapon release button. Then down here we have our elevation antenna, tilt up and tilt down. This is for the radar to look up or down. Then we have our radar acquisition button, which is in the cockpit actually back down here. We also have our side mode select to the right or to the left, which is in here. Like that we can cycle through our side modes. This is important if you are in a dogfight and need to change between missile and gun mode. Then coming back down here we have our dogfight selector mode. Uh, for the radar we have a dogfight missile mode and a dogfight gun mode which is forward and backward accordingly. And we have our resume search mode if you press the button down. We also have our pitch damper cutoff here to the left and aileron limiter here to the right. Our pitch damper cutoff actually turns off our pitch damper here. And our aileron limiter suspends the limit that we have on our roll rate. As you can see, when we hold our joystick to the left or to the right fully and then press the aileron limiter, we can actually go a further with our joystick, which gives us more roll rate. This is helpful during dogfight, but not really useful during normal flight. Now, of course, down here we also have our triggers. Uh, this plane has two trigger stages, which works well with the Thrustmaster Warthog. If you only have one trigger stage on your joystick, you should only just uh, use the trigger stage two and it will work fine. We also have our nose wheel steering button. I put it on my pinky lever because I just find it easier to hold the lever down instead of the nose wheel steering button itself. Okay, so let's have a quick look what I've changed on my keyboard setup. Right here you can see our weapon stations 1 through 7. I've put them on my keys 1 through 7 so I can quickly select one or multiple stations and turn them on and off. The second change I made is to the chaff and flare selectors. I've chosen U, Z, J and H. U and Z will turn flare to single and chaff to the off position like that. And J and H will turn the chaff to the single and the flare to the off position like that. Like that I can quickly change between either having one chaff or one flare selected. So I can jump quickly if I'm engaged by a radar missile or an IR missile. I also have my seat adjustment up and down on page up and page down. This makes it easier for landings and uh, bombing runs. And also a little tip if you have a joystick that maybe doesn't have as many buttons and switches as the Thrustmaster Warthog, you might want to use your arrow keys a little bit more. You could for example put your TDC controls on it, which is your radar cursor. Uh, right now it's on these four uh, buttons, which is quite unintuitive. And if you put them on your arrow keys, it makes it a bit more accessible. You can also put your trim on the right control and arrow keys, which makes it also more accessible. Okay, so let's have a quick look at our access commands. First, we need to be sure that we are in the FIVE. Then we go to access commands. Here we can see pitch, roll, rudder. We can have thrust and wheel brakes access and zoom view. Now to make the plane less jumpy, we can actually go to our joystick commands uh, and choose the pitch axis, go to axis tune. And here we can put up a curvature uh, on our axis. This means that in the middle of the joystick position, the axis is actually less responsive than on the outside. And I like to have a curvature of about 20 uh, for pitch and roll. This makes the plane uh, less jumpy, uh, but still responsive enough for dogfighting. Now if you go to our rudder and axis tune, we can see that there is a little bit of input error here. Uh, we can actually delete that error by putting a dead zone. I've put uh, about 3%. 
Uh, I also put the curvature of 25% on it uh, just to make the nose wheel steering less responsive. Now if you only have one thrust lever you need to choose this axis instead of left and right. I also have wheel brakes left and right on my rudder pedals and I also have my choice slider as zoom view as I explained before. This concludes this tutorial on the key setup of the Tiger F5. If you have any trouble finding the correct commands, here is a search function where you can find any command like that. And of course you can always ask in the comments. Please like or dislike and maybe leave a sub if you'd like to see the upcoming tutorials on the Tiger. Have a nice day!